a dying man, who claims he contracted terminal cancer from being exposed to asbestos dust 45 years ago, has Friday asked the High Court to speed up the hearing of a damages claim against a former County Kildare employer. 77-year-old Patrick Hayes, who is terminally ill in a hospice in Monastervine, is suing to grow building products limited and alleges he was not warned of the dangers of airborne asbestos fibers or given protection when he worked at Degrow Building Products Limited Factory in Athy for 42 weeks in 1972. Mr. Justice Michael Tooney heard that the Coquildry firm, which is yet to file a defense to the claim, stated in correspondence that it has no record confirming that Mr. Hayes worked with it. Barrister Rachel Meher, counsel for Mr. Hayes, told the court that he was diagnosed with malignant mesothelioma, a form of cancer most commonly associated with asbestos exposure. Ms. Meher, who appeared with solicitors Patrick B. Boland and Sons, Newbridge, said Mr. Hayes claimed the company had been negligent and in breach of duty by its failure to have any regard for his safety when he worked for them. Mr. Hayes alleges he was required to work in an environment where he was likely to inhale asbestos dust and claims the company failed to provide him with a safe place of work while having to move asbestos sheets which are used for insulation and fireproofing. During the course of his employment he claims he was not given an adequate protection and had inhaled asbestos fibers, the exposure to which he alleged had resulted in his cancer. Barrister Neil Flynn, counsel for Tegro Building Products, told Judge Toomey that Mr. Hayes, with an address at Kilgarrow, Athy, County Kildare, had worked for most of his life in the UK and had commenced proceedings against the company only on December 12 last after returning to Ireland in September last. When the case came before the High Court Friday Ms. Meher said her client was a dying man and was currently continuously on oxygen in Monasteravan Hospice. It is not known how long he will live. She said. She said chemotherapy and radiotherapy had been deemed by his doctors as being only marginally beneficial and that treatment of his condition was largely palliative. Ms. Meher said Mr. Hayes claimed that the only place he had been exposed to asbestos during his working career was when he was working for the girl in Athy. She said it had been established through social welfare records that Mr. Hayes had worked for the company for 42 weeks in 1972 and had paid social welfare fair contributions for those weeks. She told the court it was her opinion and that of his solicitors that the company had no bona fide defense to Mr. Hayes' claim and she asked the court, due to his condition and unknown prognosis, for various orders expediting the hearing of his claim. Mr. Hayes' legal team sought an order lawyers sought an order requiring the filing of a defense to his claim by January 3rd and a further court order directing that his personal evidence be taken on commissioned by a lawyer at Monasteravan Hospice on January 8 next. Ms. Meher said Mr. Hayes would not be able to come to court to give evidence. The grill's barrister, Neil Flynn, said his client would be putting forward a defense, and was agreeable to allowing Mr. Hayes give evidence on commission but raised concerns about the speed in which the case was being forced on especially as there was a lack of clinical evidence before the court concerning Mr. Hayes' condition. Mr. Flynn said it was asking the court to take a huge leap in allowing Mr. Hayes' application to be squeezed into such a short time space. Although Mr. Hayes' medical records had been forwarded to the defendants Mr. Hayes' legal team did not know what particular inquiries would be made by Tegrell in order for it to meet the case. Mr. Hayes has spent a large portion of his life working on building sites throughout the UK and could have been exposed to asbestos on any building project, Mr. Flynn said. It is unreasonable for the plaintiff to force these proceedings on when we are simply not ready to meet them. Mr. Justice Women, in his ruling, commended both sets of lawyers for agreeing certain matters that would expedite the claim. He said there was a lack of detailed medical evidence before the court and he noted correspondence from the company that said it had no record of having employed Mr. Hayes. I think the balance of justice lies in allowing evidence to be taken on commission on January 8 next and the court so directs, Judge Toomey said. A 